11 uncapped players in the Wallabies squad. That's fresh. But when you look at the people who are unavailable, my goodness, uh, Pattaya, Vunivalu, Gordon, Peresi, like, they've, they've got a superstar back line um, unavailable through injury. That, yeah, they've been unlucky with the timing of their injuries, uh, the, this Australia, with this naming of this Australian side. But the thing I always am weary of with the Australians is they always have have them to pick a really, really good 23. Um, so, yeah, on on paper, you look at that squad and you go, oh, there's all this, um, you, you know, freshness or uncapped players. But if you look at their 23, they're still going to be a really competitive side. It's just injuries that are going to um, that are going to hurt them. Uh, the one that I was really disappointed with was uh, Paris Parisi out of those. I think he's been a shining light for that side and. Um, got an uncanny ability to break teams open um, with either brute force or a little bit, bit of speed and subtlety to get on the outside of defenders. And the other thing I like about him, he's got that swag. He's got that real competitive edge. He loves the competition. He loves that in-your-face confrontation. And we saw it got the best out of him. When, he played, uh, when they played the Crusaders, he was on another planet, like his performance was phenomenal in that game. So <clears throat> I'm really disappointed for him because I would have loved to have seen him have a crack at the arena because I think he's got the skill set and the ability, well coached under Dave Rennie, to go to a whole nother level. I reckon their midfield will be fine though without him. Like Ikitao, um from from the Brumbies is exceptional. Um, for Kithi, the second five from the Waratahs as well, but, you know, Dave Rennie spoke so highly of him um, yes, uh, when, when the team was named. Um, and he just said he's all about setting up other players. You know, a lot of um, Paresi's success is actually on the back of the hard work and the, the, the positioning that, that Fuketi does yeah. um, to allow him to be successful. So I, I think um, they'll, they'll be a force. That, I mean, Simone can't even get in there. And I thought he was having a great... Um, yeah. Great year for the Brumbies. You know, there's so, so many guys that are missing out in that back line, but it's going to be off the back of sharpening up defence. Like Dave Rennie yesterday said, you know, we know we can attack. You know, the Aussie sides have had no problem scoring points, but we haven't been able to stop them. So a lot of a lot of their camp is going to be focusing on defence. He, he he made one comment here. I wrote it down because I was just like, man, if you're reading this as a player, you know you're going in to make a lot of tackles in camp. <laughs> he goes, we've got good men in our group who when they cross the chalk, we want to know they, are, they become different creatures, aggressive and competitive. I think that a big part of defending is wanting to go out and physically dominate and create opportunities for us to tack off. So it needs to be a big part of our DNA. So it's just like he's picked guys that he wants to become absolute, like, different sort of specimens as soon as, you know, that Swinton mindset. Mm. Controlled, though. You know, like, you don't want to be giving red cards or yellow, yellow cards, but that physical dominance with accuracy and defence and that breakdown dominance is going to be such a big part, and it will need to be a big part against France. And that's what sounds he's... like a similar media release to when he picked his first chief side mate, and then uh, obviously what he did with them. Yeah, they used to their their training sessions were obviously notorious for being extremely competitive, punch ups galore. So, yeah, uh, that to me, yeah, speaks volumes, Chivo, of uh, what these boys can expect is uh, testing themselves. Uh, to, to what will be probably sometimes harder than what a game is. Oh, I'd say so, but it's, I think the type of player, the type of new forward and player and the, the, the other players that have played before, the older players coming back, I, I think they're well suited and, and ready for that. So I, I th I'm really excited for this, this mm. series. I think it's going to be an absolute doozy. So do you build a Wallabies attacking style on top of regular defence? Is that what we're going to see from, from Rennie? Or what will we see as far as attacking style is concerned? I think there'll be a bit of um, kick strategy in there, attacking kick strategy um, and, and playing that territory base. And, and then I think they've shown um, enough in terms of their players to have instinctive attack as well. So, But I, I think their biggest focus is stopping points. You know, Winning test match footy is about you know, nullifying the opposition scoring and then taking your, 
your points when on offer. So building that scoreboard pressure, you know, having good forward dominance, having that set piece, um, you know, they're not good test matches. So it's, it's a step up from Super Rugby. You're not going to just run over the try line like we've seen um, throughout Trans Tasman. It, it's it's going to be a, especially against France. Like these guys are well conditioned. They perform really well in Six Nations. They've got a bit of flair about them, but they've also got a bit of steel defensively. Um, so it's it's, it's going to be about um, building into games and finding that attack, but I think it's going to be off the basis of defence. And I, I think a lot of his messaging yesterday was about turning defence into attack. So winning the breakdown, winning collisions, setting a presence, making our presence felt on the rugby field through defence, and then from that, building our attack. Chiefs mark too, like you said. Yeah, I think so, mate. I think so. The, this side, um, that... Well, knowing Dave Rennie's mindset and how he um, likes his squad to play and how he likes his players to uh, I think, reflects in his selection. And, and it doesn't matter. I think what I've liked is that he's picked the best available to him, whichever he has on yeah. um, maybe promise or uh, ability in the future. He's picked on form and he's picked on toughness. So, yeah, I think we're going to... This, um, a really competitive series, but yeah, that French side is uh, pretty, uh, and I'm sure they'll send down a pretty stack, and it'll be a real good test for, for this Wallabies outfit. I think the key, though, is what I said is the smarts as well. Like, you can be tough and you can be angry and all that, but you've got to keep it at a level where you can still stick in your systems and nail your role, be connected with your mate, cool, calm and within the parameters of the rules. So there is a balance there, and you've got to get that right. Mm. Best players get it right. So the pass mark, pass mark is, is a series win. Uh, whitewash, what is the pass mark here for this team going up against France? Oh. I think the French go on as favourites, don't, don't they? Um, yeah, yeah I, I would have thought so. Yeah, I, 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 I just think just because of the form and the time they've had together, but they, they obviously had a few dips and, and they're probably on track to win the Six Nations but didn't, you know, dipped at crucial times. So they're not, they're not you know, peaking, but we, we've spoken about at length that's perfect for their 2023. So they're learning a little bit uh, coming down here, learning a little bit about the Southern Hemisphere flair, but, you know, Australia is still rebuilding 11 new caps, um, three games in 11 days. So that there's a little bit of attrition there, war of attrition. So squad depth is going to be key. So, look, you, you would hate to see a whitewash but the for squad, either side. Squad depth could be the key period for France because you never know who's going to turn up. Like, when I say, I mean that by who the clubs are going to release to be selected for this game. Yeah, so I think that'll be the judge of it. Look, I think a 2-1 victory to, to the Wallabies would be massive. Yeah. You happy with that? No, I think... I don't think we're going to see a whitewash at all. I think if the Wallabies can win one of the three, then I reckon they'll, they'll say that's a pass mark with the amount of injuries that they've got. I, I agree with Chibber going on to that series as the favourites. Um, but it's all in, as you alluded to, Ross, on, on who is available for selection. Because if all their, if they bring their best squad down here, I think they will have the ability to, to whitewash the Wallabies. But... I don't think all those guys are going to be available. 